And a good morning, birds fans. Even though that might be a stretch. You got your Mac and Mac guys, John McMullen and Jody McDonald here with you for a fast two of Philadelphia Eagle news and conversation. And Johnny Mac, after you thought you'd gotten over the bad feeling of the Eagles' first loss of the year Monday night at the uh, link against the Washington Commanders, News came down yesterday, which did not make any Eagle fan feel any better, that Dallas Goddard was injured on the play, that he coughed up the football, the missed uh, face mask penalty, a play in which he was able to stay in the game thereafter and continue to play. But on further examination, there's a shoulder issue with Dallas Goddard that the Eagles say is going to keep him out of the lineup. For multiple weeks, we'll only find out over time how many multiples there are in multiple weeks. But it looks like God Dallas is gonna, Goddard is going to be missing time for the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's a guy they just can't afford to lose, Johnny Mac. No. Uh, you know, um, I think it was 8-0 no, where, you know, when the Eagles were clearly the best team in the NFL in my mind uh, – um, you know, I said it a bunch of times. The one thing that can change everything in the NFL is injuries. Um, the good news is some of the Eagles injuries are, are obviously uh, very bad for the short term, but none of them are long term injuries. So whether it's Jordan Davis on defense, Avante, Avante Maddox um, and now Dallas Goddard, they're going to be back. Uh, but you definitely have to persevere. And the one thing about. Jordan Davis on the defensive side, the adjustments haven't come quick enough to playing without him. They, you know, they're still working it out. We're still, you know, they still need to fix some things. And, you know, hopefully he'll be back <laughs> quickly. Um, hopefully he'll be back for that Tennessee game. Is That's as quickly as he can come back. Same thing offensively. You can't just put in Jack Stoll or Grant Calcaterra or Tyree Jackson and say, go do what Dallas Goddard does. And that's sort of what they've done on the defensive side of the ball with Marvin Wilson in Houston and Marlon Tui Pelota. Just do what Jordan does. Doesn't work that way, Jody. Um, so, you know, this is the first test for this coaching staff, and they they failed it in a little in a little way uh, over a short term, not making adjustments quick enough. You have to play a different way without Dallas Goddard. And hopefully it's it's probably an AC joint sprain, so we're talking two to four weeks. Hopefully he's not even on injured reserve, um, maybe misses two games. Hopefully he can get back. But you can't play the way you were playing with Dallas Goddard. So, you know, balls in Nick Sirianni, Shane Steichen's court, they got to figure out a way how to do things a little bit differently. Your point is well taken, uh, trying to find a silver lining in a star cloud, that the injuries that the Eagles have suffered, none of them are believed to be season-ending. Because you get those type of injuries, injuries, uh, major injury, and guess what? See you next training camp. Uh, That's not the case with any of the injuries the Eagles have had. So that is the good news. But here's the bad news. Um. Of the players who've gotten hurt, Maddox, I would certainly rank third, but Jordan Davis and and Dallas Goddard. Injuries are happening in positions where the drop-off from the player going out to the player stepping in to at least impart, you're right, you can't just plug them in and expect they're going to do the same. Maybe there are other adjustments that need to be made around them that the Eagles coaching staff needs to figure out. But just the uh, level of talent of the player from the guy who's going out to the guy who is for the majority going to be asking them to replace them. It's pretty massive. Uh, The the guys who are getting hurt are guys that the drop off, the depth that that position is borderline cavernous that they just don't have anyone who does what Jordan Davis does. And yes, John and I have discussed it plenty that, We're only talking about 35% of snaps. No, it's the domino effect of what happens on first down. It leads to second down. It leads to third down. And while Jordan Davis isn't on the field, he makes it easier for everybody else who's in when he's not on the field on those uh, seconds and third downs. And Dallas Goddard, uh, the drop-off between he and anyone else who's going to drop in for tight end. A.J. Brown is, is 
right now having a better year than Dallas Scott, maybe having a better year than uh, any other uh, Philadelphia player, just statistically and ratings wise up until this past game when he got hurt early and didn't really do much. But through eight games, he might have been uh, the number one ranked player overall on this team. They can replace him. They can move Devontae Smith up. They can move Quez Watkins up. They could put Zach Pascal in there. Oh, there's a drop-off. But that drop-off from, say, Zach Pascal, guy who's replacing him, from A.J. Brown to Zach Pascal is not a big a drop-off as Dallas Carter to Jack Stoll. I'm sorry. That's massive, and that's why this injury scares me greatly, John. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if AJ is the best example I would have given because he's another guy that you have a significant drop off. But and you kind of saw it in game. I mean, they weren't the same team without the ability to lean on AJ Brown. Um, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, same thing. You got to play a different way, um, and. They haven't shown evidence yet. Now it's a very small sample size. That and and Nick Sirianni, by the way, said it was talking more about the defense, about oh yeah, not making quick enough adjustments. Well, you know, and and I agree with that. Um, but now we got to see it all offensively. You get you got to make adjustments, and they didn't make adjustments to losing uh, the effectiveness of AJ Brown. He was out there. But they didn't make enough adjustments to, to okay, he's out there as a decoy. Um, so I would argue it was on both sides of the football. Uh, and, and Dallas Goddard, yeah, I mean, I, I said he was the best pure football player on this team. You could say A.J. Brown. Very small list of guys you can say. He's in that list. Um, and, you know, Jack Stoll's not – his role's not going to change anyway. He's the blocking tight end for the most part when they play 12 personnel. Now you got to amp up either Grant Calcaterra or Tyree Jackson who hasn't played in a calendar year and is still learning the position. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a bigger drop-off on this team at any position, including right. Jordan Davis to Marlon Tui Pelotu. That's not the drop-off that this is. Um, this, this is – as you used to term cavernous, this is the floor comes out of you. They do not have depth at the tight end. And you could throw Noah Tungi eye. They might, um, he, he might be more likely to play because he's got, even though he's on the practice squad, he's got so much more experience than playing the position um, at the pro level than Grant Calcaterra and even at the college level. And certainly Tyree Jackson, who's a former quarterback. So, you might even have to throw Noah Tungi out in the in the mix, but yeah, it's for for two weeks. You know, it's almost you got to play more eleven personnel. You got to play more Quez Watkins. You got to play more Zach Pascal. You got to go about it a different way. And until Dallas got it, you got to hold down the fort. You gotta you gotta you gotta make those adjustments. Let me ask you about Tungi. Um because they're in a unique position here. And you and I both were kind of wowed by Tyree Jackson. Not this camp, but the previous camp two years ago when he was making the transition from quarterback to tight end, made some plays, opened some eyes. People said, wow, the Eagles got a prospect here. And, of course, he gets hurt, so they don't get a real good look at him. He plays in the JV game, the last game of the season against the Eagles, makes a couple plays uh, against the Cowboys, makes a couple plays, but gets hurt again. And now he's out for the entire season up until this point. They had opened his practice window of 21 days coming off the IR uh, two weeks ago. So they basically have to put him on the roster this week or he stays on the IR for the rest of the year and not knowing how long Goddard's going to be out. I think they believe that they want to have him at least available to potentially play. Uh, they're not going to carry three tight ends to replace Dallas Goddard this upcoming week, are they? Are they going to have Stoll and well, Calcutta they, they, and they, Tunga? Uh, if they've got Jackson, that's all four tight ends. They can't afford to have all four guys on the roster. They um, Well, Noah would be an elevation. He wouldn't be on the 53. Um, you can just elevate him from the practice squad. I, I, I believe they still have one more for him uh, to elevate. Uh, but, yeah, they have to make a decision today. Today is the final day on Tyree Jackson. 
So they either have to put him on the 53 or uh, he's done for the season. Um, now, it, you don't want to put Dallas Goddard on IR unless you have to. Right. So you're going to you're gonna find out what the seriousness is of that injury. If it's in the four-game window, if he's going to be back, in other words, before four games, you don't want to put him on IR. You don't want to waste uh, um, – Dallas Goddard, if he's available to play. So if they have to carry him on the 53, it makes it much more complicated. Now, they already have a spot uh, um, that they could just put Tyree Jackson on. Um, but then um, um, you have to make some other decisions as well down the road. Now, the big problem with this, Jody, is a lot of people get caught up in this bottom of the roster nonsense. And guys who aren't even active on game days. There are guys you can move and guys you can get through waivers and guys you can get back on the practice squad. Yeah, if you have to carry Dallas Goddard because he's going to be back in that four-game window and you have to activate Tyree Jackson, yeah, just carry four tight ends for a couple weeks. There, There's inactive guys every week anyway on the back end of the roster. Just carry four for for two weeks. Sometimes you have to do these types of things. Um, right. But you mentioned Togi as well. Um, that would well, he's fine. not going to be on the 53. He's on the practice squad. You don't have to worry about him unless somebody comes in out of nowhere and wants to sign him off the practice squad, which isn't going to happen. Uh, you don't have to worry about him. He's on the practice squad. You can elevate him on game day and simply toggle back and forth. The issue is Calcaterra because Calcaterra is not ready to play. But they, they're afraid they would lose him if they put him on waivers and tried to get him on the practice squad. So they're going to keep him on the roster. Um, my assumption is they're going to activate Tyree Jackson today. Now, they already have the spot because they didn't fill it for, for Avante Maddox. So they already have the spot right there for Tyree Jackson. And then you have four tight ends on the 53. If Dallas Goddard is healthy enough, to where he's not going to miss those four games. And if he's not going to miss those four games, you don't want to put him on IR. So you got to carry four tight ends. That's that's it's okay for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think you're underselling the importance of the bottom of the roster and the juggling of the Why? roster. Right. They're not going to play, Jody. You have to inactive, you have to inactive uh six guys minimum every week. So I right, said, so do you do you want to go through the exercise of trying to figure out who the six guys are going to be this week? And uh, they're going to be at least one over, if not two, depending on um, uh, whether Goddard does or doesn't go to IR. Um, who are those guys? They're not going to be able to play. And then that's going to leave you a little bit short at a specific position. If you've got four tight ends and or five, if you're suggesting, Togi, I could be called up. You're going to be left short at some position, John, with, with depth. No, they're, not, they're, not they're, they're, they're not playing. So Dallas Goddard's inactive. Ian Book's inactive. Trey Sermon's inactive. Josh Schill's inactive. All these guys are the same guys every week. Sue Pett is now on the inactive list. These guys are all inactive every single week. Now, you can make – if you're going to say Calcaterra is not ready to play, just make him inactive. Elevate Tungiai, and then you have Stoll and Tyree Jackson and Tungiai as your game day tight ends. Goddard's inactive. He's on the inactive list, but you got to carry him because he's not playing. Uh, Calcaterra, you can just make him inactive, but he's on the 53 man roster. My point is that the, you're baked in. So with are, game you, day are you, aren't you, and Tyree Jackson? Yeah, he's one of the three. I'm saying this is the decision. The decision is, who do you want to play this week, Tyree Jackson or Grant Calcaterra? If, if, if Tyree Jackson isn't ready, it's simple. You just don't activate him. He's done for the season. If they think Tyree Jackson is healthy and ready to play, they got to put him on the 53. Right. And they got to carry so who four do you tight think ends. He's going to come off the 53 that were – um, act on the uh, fifty-three this week. Who do you think comes off with Tyree Jackson's addition? Nobody. They already have a spot open because they put 
Avante Maddox on injured reserve. They didn't replace him on the roster yet. So right okay. now they're at 52. They have a spot for Tyree Jackson if they want it. If they want it. Um, they don't have to cut anybody. They don't have to do anything from that perspective because Avante Maddox is on IR. Jordan Davis is on IR. Now, when those guys right, come so back, you, then you have to Do you think they're a little short at the corner this week, having not brought somebody up to replace Avante Maddox? No, because you have the practice squad elevation. So last week, they elevated uh, Mario Goodrich. Uh, not last week, Monday night. They, they elevated and Mario And let me Goodrich. ask you a question about this, because you understand the roster juggling better than I do. Um, how many guys can you elevate in any one week? Two. Um, Two practice squad guys that don't count against the 53. No, they, they don't count against the 53. They count on the game day roster. So you can elevate them um, and put them on the game day roster. If they're not on the 53 and they can toggle back and forth between the the active game day roster in, in but you you have to count them on the game day roster, right? So, if they're gonna if they're gonna play, then yeah. they're surely they're gonna count on the forty eight. Um, so you can have up upwards of two guys elevated from the practice squad every week, but you can only do that three times with a player, right? Correct. Where you elevate them by the fourth time, you have to make them part of the fifth, official fifty three. Correct. So you're and, you're guessing this week it could be Tungi I. And maybe another defensive back because they were a little short there because they didn't replace Maddox with anybody on the 53. Well, and that depends if Josh Job is healthy. Uh, last week, Josh Job, a lot of people forget, wasn't uh, active as well. So that's one of the reasons they elevated. They, they were down two corners, and that's one of the reasons they elevated uh, Mario Goodrich, who didn't even play, by the way, Joe. Right. Didn't play. Um, and, and that's my point of the back end of the roster. A lot of these guys don't even play Well, the inactive guys, obviously, I mean, Ian book, Trey sermon, Josh, uh, Sills every week, they're part yeah, of it. I, um, yeah. I, 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 and so that's when I say, when I say people overrate the back end of the rock, I mean, these guys aren't playing anyway. So you, you can, you can make people inactive and Dallas got it, you know, going in, look, the question with Dallas Goddard is simple. Is he going to miss four games or not? If he's going to miss four games, you just put him on IR like, like Maddox and, and Jordan Davis. If he's not, you got to carry him, but that's fine because he's going to be inactive on game day and, and you have to make people inactive on game day anyway. So it, it's just a couple of weeks. You have to, you have to have more tight ends than, Probably you're going to have. Then when Abonte Maddox and Jordan Davis come back, you're probably going to cut a tight end, to be honest. And one of the things that the Eagles know that we don't know is exactly how long Dallas Goddard's going to be out. And shoot, the Eagles might not know it either, but they have more information than you and I do. We're just guessing and speculating here. The Eagles have a better grasp of, is it going to be two weeks? Is it going to be three weeks? Might it be four weeks? And if it's between three and four... Do you make that call and say, yeah, for roster maneuvering uh, abilities, chances are he's going to be out the fourth week, so let's put him on IR. Or do you desperately want him available for that fourth week if you believe he will be available for that fourth week, even if he's not 100%? That's the questions that are being asked in Howie Roseman's uh, office these days uh, with all of the doctors, all the people who advise Eagles as to how hurt players are. Uh, we don't have those answers, but that's what we do here on Birds 365. We speculate and we uh, get others to join us to help us in on the speculation. We got two good guests coming your way today. Our buddy Mike Gill from uh, Down the Shore 97.3, the Sports Bash, is going to hop aboard coming up in the next five minutes or so. And in an hour number two, we haven't had EJ Smith from the Inquirer on in a couple of months. Uh, good, it'd be good to catch up with EJ. You haven't had him on. I uh, look forward to talking to him in our number two. All right, not great news. Eagles lose their first game of the year against the Commanders on uh, Monday night. Tuesday, they find out they're going to be without Dallas Goddard for multiple weeks. We're debating how much multiple weeks are and what kind of effect it's going to have on the Eagles. We'll talk about it for the next couple hours right here on Birds 365. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving.